So today I really want to smash a common myth that often teachers say. And this myth is that doing past papers constantly is going to improve your grades. Now, I really want to challenge this, and this could be controversial, but this is not the most effective way to actually get those good grades. And there are two very clear exceptions to this, and I'll mention this at the end of the video, but I want to go through what really does improve your grades at the end. And I want to take a common situation that you'd often find yourself in. So imagine at this point, if you're doing mock exams at the moment, for example, you're constantly getting B or even C grades. Well, let's think of that in terms of the percentage that you get on your IGCSE or IB exams. Now, this could really correspond to about getting 40 or 50 percent of the content correct. Now, if we think about this the other way, well, that's getting only 50 or even 60 percent wrong at this particular point in time. So if you end up doing past paper over past paper over past paper, that is not going to improve your grade. In fact, that's actually going to damage your confidence when it comes to actually working on your mathematics. Because if you're getting so many of these topics wrong, there's probably a lot of different concepts that you're simply not understanding at this point. And if you're also getting lots of blanks on your mock exams, if you're just not attempting a particular question, this is also a good sign that constantly doing past papers is not effective. So what do you need to do instead? Well, there's no problem with doing past paper questions. And notice that's a distinction here, but you need to focus on the particular topics that you are struggling with. So doing one past paper is very effective because it can show you your strengths and weaknesses within the particular topics that you do. But say you're leaving the vectors question completely blank at this point, then what you should do is focus your revision on vectors past paper questions. Now, if you want to work on vectors, for example, then do check out the video above because I go through everything you need to do on vectors in about 50 minutes. For example, if you're getting stuck on differentiation questions on paper four, then you do differentiation past paper questions. Once you have actually completed many of those kind of questions, checked to your teacher, checked with my videos that you're getting the right answers and you're understanding the concepts, then you're building up to then doing another past paper. Now, the two exceptions to what I've just been saying here are the following. That is, if you're getting consistently strong A and A star grades, so you're getting 70% or above, because at that point, a lot of your content is then secure, and then you're improving your exam technique by improving the more difficult parts of past paper questions. That's absolutely fine. At that point, you need to do constant past paper practice. And two, if you're about one or two months before the exam, because at that point, exam technique becomes more and more important. So what do you think? Do you think that I'm being controversial here in saying not doing constantly past papers? Or do you think that doing topical past paper questions in your areas of weakness is far more important? Again, please let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see the system that I employ to help students go from those much lower grades to getting those A and A star grades, then do check out the video right over here, not over here, but over here, because that's really going to help you get those high grades.